Our first guest tonight is a, a two-time Emmy winner and a very bright and funny young man starting Friday. He returns as the voice of a pubescent boy named Andrew on season four of one of the dirtiest and funniest cartoons ever, Big Mouth, on Netflix. Please welcome John Mulaney. <laughs> Hey, hey, how are you, Jimmy? Sorry, Good. I was just I was just reading Mare, <laughs> an autobiography by Ed Koch. <laughs> Very timely. <laughs> I, I do. I, I just I like a good beach read, and uh, yeah, I like I like when someone writes an autobiography while they're mayor called Mare. Are you on the beach right now? Is that where you are? Mentally, baby, you know, yeah. I really have a zen approach to life. I'm <laughs> kidding. I feel like John. I feel like you and. Um, Joe Biden and maybe like Dua Lipa are the only people who had a good 2020. <laughs> you hosted Saturday Night Live two times this year, which, and by the way, you were great both times. I, I know oh, I mentioned that you. to you, but you really did a That's nice to fantastic that. job. I, I hosted uh, February 29th, which was a leap year uh, show. They never had one before. And then I, uh, then COVID, uh, came well it was already here but you know yeah whatever COVID <laughs> happened and then I then uh everything was closed as you remember and the audience might recall too <laughs> and then uh in the summer uh things started to open up and uh, I don't I don't need to take you through the whole thing but basically I did the show the world shut down the world uh -huh. partially opened up and my first job back of anything was doing the show again oh that so, was the first thing you did that was the first thing, that was the first professional enterprise I <laughs> undertook uh, since the pandemic, yeah. And that was on Halloween. So you didn't get a chance to go and like try out your jokes or any of that stuff that people- I were... did, I did eight times. Oh, okay. Uh, I worked on the model, I ran it eight times in different fields in New Jersey and Connecticut. <laughs> outdoor restaurants and uh <laughs> you know you can gauge an outdoor crowd like it's like the ocean you're like <laughs> that could be clapping like <laughs> you just hear kind of noise and it's like has a slow roll back at you not perfect for running tight jokes uh -huh. for an snl monologue yeah but um i i went out and t on tv and i said them so and, it, and it, it it worked. I mean, people, everyone seemed to love it. I thought it was great. I mean, or did everyone love it? Or some people were mad at you, as I recall. Yes, and um, I, with good reason. With good reason. <laughs> um, I had a joke about how uh, we had the election coming up. This was October thirty first. November third was again. I don't think I need to take the audience through this, but I will anyway. Yeah. November third, there was a presidential election. Uh, and, and I had a joke whose, uh, the intention of the joke was that, uh, some things will never change, uh, despite, uh, the winner, um, and that the, uh, poor will still suffer. The rich will continue to prosper. Uh, the mentally ill and the drug addicted will not be taken care of. Jane Lynch will still book gig after gig and do a great <laughs> job at it. Uh, little girls will still uh, want to leave a sleepover because the other girls bullied her. And then she'll have to sit upstairs at the dining room table with the dad of the girl who bullied her and kind of wait for her parents. And they got up and moment. <laughs> so, so it was a very smart joke. Um, but I, I made it in the setup. I said, basically, like, no matter who wins which I really didn't even agree with. I often say things on uh, TV in front of 10 million people <laughs> that, uh, you know, I'm just kind of floating as ideas. Right. So I, I, I should have said, I very much want one to win over the other, and there will be improvements <laughs> if one wins. <laughs> I, I, and, I, and, I, and I flat out, like, I deserve the backlash. I flat out <laughs> forgot, like, I just forgot to do it. <laughs> and I never, like, I ran the joke in, like, a field in Connecticut, and I was like, all right, let's rock and roll. And I never was like, hey, don't you mean that one guy's worse than the other? And I, for, I forgot to make the joke good. So the beginning wasn't... <laughs> The beginning wasn't uh, what the beginning was, uh, uh, you know, uh, a strange thing to toss out there uh, three days before an election in front of a lot of people going, look, it doesn't matter who wins because and now I'll get to the Jane Lynch joke. Please. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. You thought. No, no, I definitely I, like my wife. Everyone who knows me was like, what the hell did you just say? And oh, I was really? like, what? no good. No good. <laughs> really? Like there's no excuse for not working out the wording of a joke. 
that you then do on television. Well, when you're but, in a field, things happen. You know, you can't really trust the, the audience. By the way, I never said it was a show. I said I was in a field. Yeah, right. <laughs> telling <laughs> jokes to people. <laughs> yeah, there was a kid's soccer game, and I, was, I, I brought snack that week, and I had orange slices. But not only were people uh, who opposed Trump angry at you, then also people who liked Trump were angry at you. Um, less so them, because oh. they kind of like the, uh, <laughs> they like low voter turnout. Uh -huh. um, but when in February, what was a little strange was, I, I'm like a Democrat, you know, uh, like I, I like people and I'm, you know, I, I'm, 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 not, I'm, I'm generally happy and not deeply angry. So I'm a Democrat and uh, I vote for the Democratic, the liberal people. Cause I'm not like, my dad didn't like make me feel like not a man. So I'm like, you know, trying to prove him right by voting for some psychopath. So I'm like a Democrat type person. So I, uh, I, was, I was surprised that, uh, that, uh, I, uh, that my, well, I wasn't surprised when I realized how bad the wording was. But that, yeah, uh, people to the left came after me this uh, last month. But in February, I did a joke that was not about Donald Trump. Uh, the joke was about how it was a leap year and leap year had been started by Julius Caesar to correct the calendar. And another thing that happened with Caesar was that um, he was uh, stabbed to death by a bunch of senators because he went crazy. And I said, that that's an interesting thing that could happen. And, uh, <laughs> and I just did it again, which is very, which I'm realizing in the moment. I just told it again. <laughs> I got in, I, a lot of like uh, magazines that I, I don't think existed before called <laughs> like patriotic magazines that just suddenly were on Twitter, you know? <laughs> just like bald eagle monthly, like this is an outrage. <laughs> and uh, so what, what also happened was there's a service that uh, operates for the president and it, they're secret. Oh. Uh, they're a secret service and <laughs> they- How do you uh, know about them? <laughs> they, they, because they investigated me and uh, they, I guess they opened a file on me because of the joke wow. and- uh, I have to say there was a, uh, uh, am I stoked there's a file open on me? Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> I enjoy it in the moment, not so much. Um, but uh, the person vetting me said, w was very understanding that this, that I, the joke had nothing to do with Donald Trump. And uh, that, uh, cause it was, you know, it was, a, it was a, an elliptical reference to him. Yeah. It wasn't, I didn't say anything about it. I'm not with the Secret but, Service, don't worry. You're not in trouble here. No, but I also thought it was funny that when he got COVID, you know, like Jake <laughs> Papper, people on the news would be like, day five of hoping someone gets worse. And like, I, you know. <laughs> um, you know, the tone of the news was like, oh, fluids are low. Um, <laughs> But I love the news, and I love the left wing, and I love Democrats. Uh, so what was I going to say? Um, so they, they were very nice in the interview. That I don't think they, uh, in terms of risk assessment, no one who, who's ever looked at me has uh, thought I registered above a one. So um, they said, now, is there anything else we should know about? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, what do you mean? They were like, anything else? And I was like, do you mean like anything bad I've done? And they were like, we don't mean anything bad you've done. <laughs> I was gonna like, you know, tell them like I, you know, sniffed glue when I was a kid and stuff. <laughs> but I, uh, I said, no, they're like, you don't have any postings about Donald Trump anywhere online that we would find rants or uh, uh, manifestos. You know, I said, no, I, I'm not, I have bad writing habits. I could never pound out a manifesto. Uh, <laughs> And um, I said, I have been making jokes about him since 2007. Uh, so I've been making fun of him for, you know, 13 years. There's that. And they said, OK, well, if it's a joke, then I, uh, I'm cleared by the Secret Service, uh, I've been told. Uh, at the same time, my wife was doing, uh, she was working on a project for the Smithsonian down in DC. So uh, we had an apartment down there, and I was living in DC. Uh, it's where we ended up quarantining. And uh, I, I failed to realize that after uh, being that after telling the Secret Service they had nothing else to worry about, 
that I had leased an apartment for one year in Washington, D.C. <laughs> <laughs> and that that apartment was across the street from the Secret Service building. Oh my goodness. So it had a, it had a, it had a, it had a vibe, it had a planned vibe to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> By the way, that I that we all know it's the Secret Service building again, not so secret. <laughs> all right. John Mulaney is with us. When we come back, we will uh, we'll see a little bit, a smidgen of the new season of Big Mouth, which premieres Friday on Netflix. We'll be right back. This is uh, Jesse's new boyfriend, I guess. Oh Lord, this guy's sensual and deep. If I'm Diane Lane, I am cheating on my mean old husband with this one. Spray painting shirtless? Ugh, so thirsty. I know. It's like ditch the pants already. What is he sweating in that picture? Mm -hmm. Click on that. Screen grab it. Now email it to my secret account, then delete it from sent items. Whatever. I'm gonna text Jesse. We should all meet up in the city. Uh, if they're forcing us to meet Michelangelo, let's just get it over with. Yeah, I mean he'll sit on your chest. You'll sit on his. Who cares? <laughs> it is John Mulaney and his pal Nick Kroll in uh, Big Mouth, which premieres a new season on, on Friday on Netflix. That is such a funny show. And, and Thank you. Uh, all credit to Nick Kroll and Andrew Goldberg for uh, creating that, and, and Mark and Jen Flackett. I come in and I just do voice. I, I, I use my voice, my beautiful voice, uh, <laughs> uh, to play a horny child. Uh, do you like using your voice to play a, a horny child? Um, I uh, really like doing voiceover stuff. I, I really, really enjoy it because um, it's easy and uh, you don't have to get, you know, you walk into like a, you just you, absolutely no effort except for the performance is required. Um, the one thing that's a little, uh, not frustrating, but one thing that I uh, realize again and again I have to do is because he's a horny child, he is often achieving um, satisfaction uh, in his own room, this boy. Um, he's masturbating. Right, right, yeah, I, I, I'm familiar with it. You were sort of looking at the, your, your expression, I wondered if you needed more, more content. <laughs> yeah. um, oh, I've read about it, yeah. So uh, I happen to make a lot of like, uh, uh, like, uh, or, um, uh, you know, like that type noise, and that's that's the noise that that uh, uh, people make, I guess. So for the ver for the versimilitude, is that the word? Uh, it's important to get it correct. But we're in season four now, and I've been making uh, climaxing noises for like three and a half years. And now when they ask for them, I'm like, Do you, don't you have a, like a bank of these already? <laughs> like, don't you have like a hundred you can choose from? I'm still standing here going like, oh yeah, oh yeah. Gah! And then they're like, could you do it with like a question mark at the end? <laughs> uh, <a laughs> those are called efforts. Like, yeah. Uh, uh, when you've done voiceover, have you done when they call it efforts? I hate doing the noises. Yes, I hate, yes. Well, now you're running, now you got punched, now you're panning, it just makes me feel like an idiot. But I've not, yeah, I'm like, not I'm like, I'm not an actor, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, I I took this because uh, I didn't have to get dressed. Like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not someone who knows how to talk while running. <laughs> John, I want to ask you. I, I I want you to know what a shockwave this sent. This was sent through the world of late night talk shows when we learned that you'd taken a job as a staff writer on Late Night with Seth Meyers show. Yeah. You, it, and well, well, tell me why, what's going on. Why is this happening? I, I like the I like the phrasing of what's going on. Uh, <laughs> well, Seth Meyers is one of my uh, best friends in the world, and uh, much like your show, I love his show very much. And uh, I hosted Saturday Night Live that week of October thirty uh, first, and I went into uh, Thirty Rockefeller. I went into an office and I accomplished a task. <laughs> and during quarantine, I was like, why am I going totally crazy? And why am I like, uh, upset? why am I suddenly like telling my own wife, like my accomplishments, you know, <laughs> you know, like I had a comedy central presents when I was 23 years old. <laughs> um, I really needed a job. I really needed a, uh, one, I, I like having a boss. Uh -huh. I like having like assignments to do. Oh. Um, when I'm in charge of something, uh, not all, not not so much, not not so much the best thing. But uh, I I wanted to have a boss and I wanted to have structure, 
because my psychiatrist, who, uh, who knows me well, uh -huh. uh, <laughs> he said to me, uh, without external structure, I don't have any confidence in you thriving. Um, and I said, yeah, yeah. Uh, so wow. I said, oh, okay. So I, and she would know, because I told her everything in, about my brain. <laughs> um, so I called Seth and I asked him for a job. <laughs> And it was really funny because I was nervous. I mean, like, I was really nervous because my thinking was, I, I said, hey, Seth, like, I, I went into it knowing, I, I know we're good friends. I know you love me. I know you think I'm funny. Um, somewhere in the back of my mind, I fear no one thinks I'm funny, but I, I, I know that you think I'm funny. I, could I have a job <laughs> on your show? And then I said, don't answer now. Think about it because it could be a bad idea. I was not doing a good pitch for myself as a right. writer. Yeah, not I was the like, because you have your own flow there. You don't want like your best friend showing up and just like, you know, wasting time and distracting you. And, and like, it just felt like, uh, I was like, I'm not going to show up, by the way, like with sunglasses on and like two Emmys. Uh, <laughs> like, <laughs> You know, I got no monologue joke ideas. I really wanted to do a good job and still do. Oh. Um, and so I said, he called me back and he, and he said that he'd be thrilled. They were all uh, great. And I was so happy. I, uh, uh, I, I'm i not that valuable. Uh-huh. <laughs> really? I That surprises me. Does he, like, does he give special um, consideration to your jokes because you are, uh, you know, a prominent man? Um... I appreciate prominence. You're welcome. Uh, I, I, um, no, yes and no. I, I, my jokes are not useful to the show. Uh, <laughs> like, and I, but I try hard. I try to write monologue jokes and they're not, the, they're not, there's a rhythm and a brilliance to the brevity of a great monologue joke, as you well know. Like, and I'm so bad at it. <laughs> really? Uh, yeah, one of them was, you know, it was like Vice President Biden announces his Secretary of State pick. And then I wrote, I bet he did it from the Amtrak, which he loves. And I don't get that because when you ride the Amtrak, it's like you're thrown up against the wall like the police are interrogating you and they only have Sierra Mist and Rolled Gold. So I didn't land the punchline <laughs> in the way that you'd hope. I have setups here that uh, I... Uh, oh, you want to do? Oh, good. All right. I, I didn't write any for these, but uh, okay. let me see. Uh, the TSA announced Saturday. No, wait, I already messed it up. The TSA <laughs> announced yesterday that Sunday was the busiest air travel day since the coronavirus pandemic hit in March. Um, um, uh, well, I wouldn't listen to the TSA. Idiots, you know? <laughs> you know when you're going through line and it's a hassle? Well... <laughs> That's what I think of them. So that doesn't work. Yeah, right. Yeah. No, I see where I see what you're getting at. <laughs> but you're getting paid, right? You get lunch, I assume. Yeah, there's lunch from the commissary. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I'm really, I'm really, I, I, I cannot stress enough how grateful I am for the job. And uh, rather than say to me, John, you know, you're clearly going through something. Uh, but the jokes are terrible. Um, he's given me a couple segments to come on and 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 do what I wrote, and those I, have been uh, those have been really really fun. In, in so, other words, you do these jokes. Exactly. Exactly. It's like, yeah. I've been handed I've been handed back things, and goes he goes I can't do this. <laughs> Well, John, you, uh, everything you do is great. I honestly mean that. And I, I thank you for being uh, on the show tonight. Season four of Big Mouth uh, premieres Friday on Netflix. John Mulaney, everybody. Thank you. Out in stars now. <laughs> we'll be back with Rita Wilson. If you like that video, click subscribe, and we'll be together until one of us dies. <laughs>